So I've been on a bit of a jag recently to repair and maintain uh, not just the digital collection, but also my physical stuff, the, the stuff I use for photography and stuff just generally around the house. And I want to show you uh, some work that I did on some old battery packs. And there's a couple of things I like about this. Uh, one is that they're useful. I've had these things for a very long time. And um, they're actually pretty easy for me to do some work to, to maintain and, in this case, uh, refresh and, and restore the device. What we'll uh, be looking at today is the Quantum Battery 2. And I've got a couple of these. Actually, I have three of them. I bought them in the uh, probably late 80s. Maybe there was something that was bought in the early 90s. And they're an external uh, battery pack that's useful for strobes, hand strobes, like uh, originally I would have used it with this Vivitar 285. Uh, really wonderful um, uh, workhorse from the olden days. Um, more recently, I would have used it with uh, Nikon strobes. And so you can, this same power supply replaces four uh, AA batteries with uh, significantly more power and it's rechargeable batteries so that you don't have to uh, throw them away. Um, and uh, so let's take a look here. This unit has uh, been sitting around for maybe a decade. And even though I've been charging it for 12 hours, it's still not getting all the way uh, charged up. And this would maybe provide two flashes, something like that. It, it just really isn't um, got any more juice left. So let's see what it looks like to take this thing apart and see what the guts look like. I've got a second unit here. And when you remove the four screws that are... Um, are used to hold this in place. The screws go in these little eyelets here. This is what comes out. And what we've got are these three lead acid D cell batteries, uh, 2.5 uh, amp hours per. Um, and then there's just a little logic board here and then the connectors and control panel on top. And you can see that it connects by these two wires, um, spade plugs on either side, and that these batteries are wired together. Now this is the version that I did back in, I believe, uh, about 1999. Um, I think the date on the bottom of this indicates that these batteries were uh, made in 1997. Okay, so let's see how we put this together start with the battery itself. These are D cell cyclone cells, exactly what was in the original Quantum. And uh, these were available at Battery Plus, my local shop. And they were actually uh, even cheaper than most of the mail order. So the three batteries that I needed were 10 bucks a piece. So 30 bucks to resell this unit. They come with tabs on top of the connectors. So we take those tabs off. I'm gonna go ahead and tape these together before we do the soldering. And then we'll be back in a second to look at that. Okay, so we're taped up and we can see that everything is in alignment. Just need to make sure that you're gonna be doing uh, positive, to posit or positive to negative and not uh, have polarity switched. Of course, it's fairly easy to tell because the printing is on one side and a different printing on the other side. Okay, so now we need to um, bend these tabs over so that they're close together. And we can start the bend by just hitting them with some pliers and then take that over. And we just want to get them close so that the wire that we solder doesn't have very far to go. You'll notice also that I've um, I put the little protectors back on either side here 
because uh, once this gets wired together, this is, uh, this is hot on either side. Um, and you also want to make sure that you don't bridge the two terminals with a conductor. Uh, these things come charged and so there's a fair amount of juice in there and if you bridge that it will whatever you bridge it with will get very hot very quickly okay so now let's get the wire ready I've got just some old wire here that I've kept you know it was cut off of an old uh, lamp cord essentially and this is what we've got and I use, you can, you know, obviously just cut it with, a, with some pliers um, and strip it with a knife. Or these are some nice little wire strippers. Nice automatic blade clamps down, size for the right gauge. So now I've got my little piece of wire here. And I'm going to just kind of... Twist it a bit, not make it too tight a twist. And I'm going to cut off this whole piece and I'm going to want to solder it between those two uh, contacts right there. Okay, so I've got the wire held in place with some hemostats and I'm going to fire up my soldering gun here and Get this thing hot and have it melt that solder in and that looks like a reasonably good joint right there then I'll take the hemostats off do this second side now if this is being done at at a commercial shop they'd be spot welding rather than soldering but my last one lasted for 10 years, so I'm going to say this is probably going to be okay. So we'll give that a second to cool off and set. And then I've got some snippers here, and I'm just going to snip off the excess wire. And there we are. Now let's do the next one. One of the reasons that I'm uh, doing this work to rejuvenate this old battery is that it's really useful in the digital age in a way that it wasn't quite as useful in the age of film. And there's two reasons for that. The first is that digital cameras can deal with a lot less light than um, film wanted, and therefore we can get just a tremendous number of flashes out of a small battery like this quantum pack by putting it on your strobe and, and you dial your ISO up and this can go down to uh, a, a pretty low power mode. So it, it really is quite useful as a long life power supply, even though it's not a super high voltage uh, power supply. Um, the other is that it was harder to make use of um, uh, flashes with no modeling light in the film age because you couldn't quite see what you were getting. And of course, now that we get this immediate feedback on what the picture looks like, it's a lot easier to make good pictures using flashes that don't have modeling lights. And in the case of the project that I have coming up, 
I'm going to be traveling and I'm going to be setting up a studio and I don't want to carry heavy studio lights with me. So this really lightweight uh, hand strobe with a lightweight battery pack uh, on a radio remote. And then this little connector allows me to just put it on a light stand. And also there's a, a connector here for an umbrella so I can put an umbrella uh, on this and get a nice soft studio type of light with something that that uh, is very small and easy to carry. And it turns out over the years, I've collected just a ton of these um, Nikon speed lights. They, they cost like three or four hundred dollars a piece when I originally bought them. And they're not quite as compatible with the cameras, um, the digital cameras. Um, the, the TTL doesn't work. So they were kind of just sitting around doing nothing, and I think I have something like six of these. Uh, of course, it would be nicer if you wanted to go full Joe McNally and have everything all wired together um, and use TTL commander mode from, from your uh, camera. But in a lot of cases, like the project that I have coming up, I'm setting lights and I want them to stay the same. So I really don't need all that fancy stuff. What I really need is just a good, reliable, repeatable flash where I can dial it down. It's also very nice that this has a, a built-in slave if I want to use that. Uh, I'll probably use my radios uh, instead, but um, you could use the built-in slave. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I think this is something that has good new life. And, of course, there's an environmental issue with not um, uh, having batteries that you're going to end up throwing away. Now, these are lead-acid batteries, and that means that you do need to dispose of them properly. Uh, here in Montgomery County, Maryland, that means taking them to the hazardous waste drop-off. Uh, it's just like car batteries. Um, they... They want to make sure that they take care of them properly. So I will take these old spent ones, the 1997 version, and uh, send those to the drop-off, the hazardous waste drop-off. Let me show you what it looks like all put together. Once we're done, uh, I'll come back and show that to you in a minute. So here's what it looks like when it's all put together. We have the strobe on the elbow arm with the umbrella coming through the hole and then in my case i have one of these uh, pocket wizard receivers that is uh, plugging into the sink socket on the strobe and then we have the cord coming down to the power pack uh, i didn't get a chance to charge it up so it's still just with the charge the batteries had when they um, were added and uh, this is got enough juice that it can flash all day long at an eighth power and that's good enough to get uh, something like f8 at um, 800 iso at about 10 feet from this umbrella so that's a nice soft light and it's even enough juice to go out and do uh, fill flash out in the daylight and get a nice soft light if you're doing outdoor portraiture. So there you go. Resurrecting quantum battery pack, reusing uh, old school non-TTL um, hand strobes.